Hi there, this is Tess and welcome in this new video. In this video, we'll talk all about the Power BI REST APIs. Let's get started. So this is really what we're trying to get to. We want a report that helps us to see uh, the different data sets within the organization, their last refresh state, and then also whether the automatic refresh is enabled or not. Before we dive into the uh, the technical details of this report, let's actually start with the basics and explain why API calls are relevant in a Power BI environment. Let's say we are a Power BI admin of a large organization. In the beginning, it was just finance developing their own Power BI reports. Now it's marketing, it's supply chain, it's HR, and it's becoming quite a lot to handle. Now, Power BI REST APIs can help us to get that oversight across the organization. Not only this, but as we previously saw, it also helps us with refreshes that might have failed in the past. And we want to make sure that this doesn't happen too often and that we have to intervene manually. Let's start with the basics here. What is an API? Well, an API or an application programming interface is just a way that two programs or applications communicate with each other and they do so through requests and responses. Those requests might either be a get, post, put or delete request and the response is just some information in a structured format like JSON or XML. In the context of Power BI, we are receiving information from Power BI web service. We are asking that information through those requests. So we've seen that Power BI REST APIs can help us to get information in a given Power BI web service environment. But of course, we need to tell Power BI that we have the right permissions to receive that data. And we do so through an application. We basically give the application the relevant permissions and then we register it in our tenant. We can do so either through the built-in um, yeah, app registration in Power BI, or we could also do it directly in the Azure portal. To illustrate this, let's actually head over to the Azure portal environment. So we are in our Microsoft Azure portal. We'll go to app registrations. So you see that already we created uh, two apps in this tenant. We'll click on new registration. We'll just say test application, register. And now we have a lot of important information already right here. So um, there are some steps that we uh, need to do in a later stage to actually be able to receive all the information. But uh, for now, we just need to specify to the portal what kind of permissions this application has. So this is just an additional way of managing it all in the portal. Some important things here, and we click on certific certificates and secrets. In a later stage, you'll see that we have to create a client secret. Uh, we have also have the token configuration, API permissions, and so on. So the API permissions is actually where we specify the permissions that this application has. So we'll click on add. Then we'll go to Power BI. Select delegated permissions. And then we can see all kinds of permissions that are available, like dataset read all. You can also select on an app based level. You can do it on a content uh, level. So these are some um, yeah, configurations that you can give to the application. And then in a later state, you can call specific APIs to return that specific data. So these permissions are required to basically uh, yeah, allow the APIs to work. So update this. Now you see that we have uh, added a couple of permissions for the Power BI service. And we actually have to grant admin consent for Delta Public. And so this is our tenant uh, and this is required as part of the app. Now it's granting uh, admin consent. So now we actually uh, did our initial step 
of registering the app and giving it the right permissions. So let's actually go back to our slides and see what kind of API calls are available for the Power BI web service. So what kind of calls are available? Well, Microsoft actually added a classification. Eh? So they uh, defined the APIs by operation group. Um, eh? Some might be relevant as an admin, other as a, I don't know, there may be uh, pipelines that we want to manage. So there is some logical structure to it and Microsoft divided into operation groups. Examples include, well, for an admin, uh, get data sets within a workspace. Um, get dataset users, get activity events, and so on. We can capture a lot of information as an admin. We can also have uh, information returned about datasets. Eh? Get dataset just returns a specified dataset from a workspace, but also get dataset users, get data sources, get direct query refresh schedules. We can, uh, you can see that there's a lot of information that we can capture through these API calls. So how do we configure these API calls? Well, there's actually multiple options. If you're just developing your own application and you want to embed your data from a report into that application, you will also need those APIs and it will be done directly in that .NET coding environment. Another way is also uh, displaying the information in, for example, a Power BI report, which is also what John Kursky did after he stumbled upon a problem. And the prob problem that he had was that there were a lot of refresh failures happening across the different workspaces and there was no way to manage it all. And they just received a lot of emails and there was no best practices, no DevOps involved. And then he actually uh, used those API calls to get that information in a Power BI report and then also have that updated automatically. So a great use case, and we'll actually explore this a bit further in the next few minutes. So I went and opened up John Kursky's blog post here. We are at Data Ops Principle 16. I highly recommend you check out the others as well. And he just explains like uh, the challenges that IT admins have, and there's a link at the end to the um, report on github now it is important to note that you will need a premium per user license it will only work that way the steps are listed here so when you go to the page you just have all the, the steps here and the first step of course being registering the application uh, a step that we already showed you and know how to do um, then there's a couple of things that you need to uh, yeah, note down and uh, write down. So your application name, application type, and so on. Um, these are also things that you can find in the overview page of your app. It will also walk you through how to get an application secret, all quite uh, basic steps, uh, the permissions we already talked about. Um, and then the final thing is just inputting all this information in the Power BI report. Um, we actually have the report right here. So this is the um, the example that uh, that we use. So it works perfectly. Um, it just has a bunch of parameters, then the API calls, and then the tables that are being returned by Power Query. So the parameters are the things that you can find in your uh, Azure portal and also in the Power BI web service. You just uh, input them, follow the different steps uh, that are mentioned in the blog post uh, by John, and then you will be able to get all this different information. Uh, we chose a couple of uh, things that were relevant for our um, yeah our reports. Uh, so this is just um, an API call that we're seeing here, and then we convert those uh, outputs into a table format, and then we can use those tables in our report. So when we have this all configured in Power BI Desktop, we can go ahead and publish our report to the web service. Now, this is a, an example for our organization. Uh, we have a, a startup that um, uses a lot of data sets across different workspaces. And this report helps us to spot any failed refreshes over the last three days and also 
uh, any successful ones, in which you'll see in the second report. Our first, first report just focuses on the failed refreshes over the last three days, and it also includes the impacted datasets and the impacted reports. Now, important for us, we want to know whether the auto refresh is disabled or not, because in that case, we need to intervene. Um, uh, Power BI, I think, will try to uh, re refresh <laughs> the dataset um, four times, uh, up to four times, but after four times, it will just say, you know what, I'm, I'm cancelling this, um, let's actually not try again. And then we have to step in and make sure that the auto refresh option is enabled. Our second report is an overview of the different data sets within the organization and uh, some additional details. We, al we also see um, at what times the data set is supposed to refresh. Of course, very interesting information. We need to make sure that we are not putting too much uh, pressure on those uh, resources. And then a third report within our uh, app is actually a, a sort of a benchmark report. Eh? So we see the average duration over here. We also have a, a standard duration, um, average duration of the refresh in hours, number of refreshes and so on. And then we see some kind of a benchmark um, and we can spot any yeah, any workspaces that might uh, be suited for some database improvements or report improvements, depending on the error. Um, so yeah, that's basically how we use our um, refresh uh, and API calls within the organization. So this is, of course, from an IT management perspective, uh, very efficient. Instead of receiving all these emails, we can just check this on a, yeah, a daily, a weekly basis. Um, and hopefully this illustrates the, the use case for these API calls quite well. Some final notes before we end. So as you know, setting up the API permissions well, can be done through the Azure portal, but it can also be done in a more simplified uh, format when you go to dev.powerbi.com slash apps. If you're testing out these APIs for the first time, I would highly recommend you to check out Postman to see whether the information that is being returned is actually the information that you expect and that is correct. Um, common problem, uh, when we did the example of uh, John Kursky, we ran into a problem where a query was referencing another queries and then the report failed when we pushed it to the service. So make sure that every query uh, is a query of its own and isn't referencing other any queries and then everything will be all right, hopefully. So that was it for this video. I hope you uh, learned some more about the API calls I hope this was some inspiration as well to maybe try it out and thank you a lot for watching. Bye bye.